Hi, my name is Jeff Wilker. I'm a software architect working on the Nokia Network Services platform. I'd like to show you a short demo today of some machine learning capabilities that we've recently developed for the NSP. Machine learning is of interest in network automation for a number of reasons. Modern networks are complex and constantly evolving, and they simply produce too much data for humans to consume. Machine learning can assist in this, ultimately improving operator productivity and saving time. So I'll start by describing a few of the use cases that we're applying machine learning to. Manually configured threshold crossing alerts can be challenging to, to manage at scale and can often produce many false positives since they don't reflect dynamic network behavior. Instead, traffic baselines can be used to automatically learn expected traffic behavior based on time of day and day of week, such that once the expected normal operating behavior has been learned, then when unexpected things happen, meaningful anomalies can be detected and raised. A second use case is relating through cutting through the noise in a network. Networks generate enormous amounts of event data, too much for operators to consume manually. Machine learning can be applied to correlate events and produce much more meaningful situations, reducing the event volume from tens of thousands of events to a handful of situations. Furthermore, um, unwanted noise can be dropped from the network and not presented to the operator at all. I'll start with a, a, an overview of a, the new application that we're building for the NSP. It takes a number of inputs, including things like a static network data, like network topology and inventory. It also takes dynamic data, like a number of different event types, including configuration changes, alarms, and anomaly events. These events are inputted into machine learning algorithms, which correlate the events from tens of thousands of events to a handful of situations using no pre-written correlation rules. Once meaningful situations are, are identified from the event data, they are input into a recommendation engine such that through operator feedback over time, the system can be trained and learn to make recommended actions based on past situations should they occur again in the future. Also, situations that are not meaningful can be dropped from the system as noise and not presented to the operator at all. I'll begin my demo by, by describing the lab network that we've used to set up the, this scenario. So this is a network topology diagram showing 29 routers over which we're running a number of VLL services that are passing traffic. Now we're using this network to generate a fair amount of noise, such as non-service affecting port flapping noise in the upper left. We're introducing faults like um, Ethernet framing errors. We are making bad configuration changes to, say, invalid MTU values, and we're periodically rebooting devices. Now, what we're attempting to do here is generate a lot of event noise from this network and then use our software to detect the meaningful situations that actually occurred. What this first screen is showing is the overall event feed into the system in the upper pane. So this, this sample consists of 70,000 events that were taken over approximately a 16-hour period. Events are organized by layer, so we have physical, transport, and service level of events. So for example, we've got tunnel alarms at the transport layer and service configuration changes at the service layer. Now in the bottom, we're showing the situations that we've identified from these 70,000 events, of which there's 19. So in this case, we've got a situation with 200 impacted services. Green situations have already been processed by the system, where there are two new red situations that have been identified. So we'll zoom the system out, and just, just to make things a little bit more clear, so as we zoom the events out, we can see that there's ongoing network noise. So for example, port down alarms, where there's a pattern of events that have been identified and correlated into a situation. We can also identify events by type. So in this case, we'll just switch to that view and then zoom and pan out. We can see in this case that the events are identified as alarms, baseline events from our baselining system, and configuration changes. If we highlight over, here's a received bad packets anomaly event that was generated from our baselining system. We can now flip to an overall tiled view. And this shows some basic stats on the system. So we have 71,000 events roughly that were processed in the last 24 hours into 19 situations with a 99% event reduction rate. We have two new situations that have been identified by the system. 
This view, another global view, is analogous to an email system. So as new situations come into the system, they are, they are placed in the current category, similar to a, an email inbox. When the system can automatically take action on them, for example, making an automatic recommendation or suppressing them, then they are placed in subsequent categories. If we look at the two new situations that have been identified, we can see a few interesting columns, like a priority, which it has been prioritized based on the number of impacted nodes and services. We can also see that there are no labels that have yet been applied to the situation because it's new to the system. We can also look at resolved situations that are previously known to the system. They're all in a green known state and they've had various labels applied to them like Ethernet traffic corruption, node reboot, or network MTU configuration change. Now if we drill into the highest priority new situation, we can look at the events that were correlated together in detail. So we have on the left the overall situation details, and then we've got the events again presented by layer. Now in this case, it's interesting because at the physical layer, so these are things like router level of events, there are no alarms that were produced. We can see some anomaly events like, for example, a received total octets anomaly and a received bad packets anomaly where traffic is being dropped. That's an event that's noteworthy. Now as we look up the dependencies, we can see tunnel alarms and hundreds of service alarms. Now faults tend to occur at the bottom and work their way up. So now switching to our recommendation system, we look at our new situation on the left and we look for the closest matching things that we can find that have occurred in the past. So the closest one was scored at 89% similarity. It was previously labeled as an ethernet traffic corruption problem and we can see some actions that were taken and some comments that an operator had previously entered saying some critical events were received bad packets events. Now, if we look at the raw events that make up the situation, we can see, so there's 5,000 events roughly that were correlated, and they are made of anomaly events and configuration events, but we can filter down to the events that are of interest. So in this case, we're looking for anomaly events. And in specifically received bad packets, we can then drill into the baselining details for that interface. So this view is showing baselining information that's been learned over the last period of time, for example, a month. We can zoom into an, a particular area of interest. There are two lines shown, a blue line and a green line, one being the baseline and the other being the current value, with the red arrow indicating that an anomaly occurred. So going back to our, our similarity view, or our recommendation view, the closest matched situation looks the same as the new one, so we can associate them together copying any previously entered labels. The operator can then add additional information like labels and comments, and once they're happy with that, then they can mark it as complete, which effectively further trains our recommendation system with this new situation. Now, if we flip back to the global view, we can see that there's still one outstanding situation, so we can again look at the details. So in this case, we're going to start with the recommendation view and we can see, so the new one on the left, the closest matching, which was scored at 100%, so this was the same incident that, that occurred previously, and it was identified as an MTU configuration change. So, based on that, we can then dig into the details of the situation and look at the raw events that, that make it up. So we'll just, again, the events are presented by layer. We can zoom them out. At the physical layer at the bottom, you can see, oh, that there's a configuration change at the very start. So this is a, a MTU change from 1514 to 1000. Shortly after that, there's a, a link alarm that was produced and then a few tunnel alarms and hundreds of service alarms. So going back then to the recommendation view, we can again see this closest matching situation looks like the same thing we can associate them together to copy any related information into this new situation, add comments, and mark it as complete once we're happy with it.
Now, as we look at this, this known, the situations in the system, you can see that they're all in a known state. Everything has been addressed. And again, just a few of the other global views, there's, there's nothing left outstanding. So what I've demonstrated is that we've used machine learning techniques to do an, a massive event reduction, only presenting a meaningful number of situations to an operator. Furthermore, as the system has been trained over time, it's able to provide recommendations to the operator to provide faster problem resolution. Ultimately, this results in better operator productivity and time savings. Thanks for your attention.